Twist Cast. Network. My bitches start kicking ass just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour. Tower of power. Too sweet to sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. Nightmares on the best part of my day. The goods from the woods. Hot damn. Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley. Yeah. Pat Riley. Yeah. It's settled in. <laughs> it's a good night, man of the hour. Tower of power. <laughs> too sweet of a sour and just too hung up on his microphone. <laughs> Put your whole face on it, Mr. Goodnight. I will. Your whole face. I will. Your whole making face love on the, to the mic. microphone in the stand. You're like Tina Turner. I am like love Tina Turner. To the microphone. I am. You can see it now. This is erotic. <laughs> this is rated R shit. I've been loving you <laughs> too long. This is Making love. Why don't you give me something to rest my nose on? <laughs> Making love. <laughs> what is that voice? Yeah, yeah. put your whole Dark face chocolate. on it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The it's whole like, face. The mustache, too. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's upsetting. Joining us today, <laughs> a bon vivant, a jack of all trades, a, a master of all. Hi, George Coffey. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, how's it going? I, I, I was kind of hoping you'd just go, hi. 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 <laughs> Edit that in. Uh, the shirt that I'm wearing says, George Webb, the only one who predicts our Brewers will win 12 straight games. Wow. George Webb. And, uh, Is that a Milwaukee Brewers Yeah, it's shirt? for the Milwaukee Brewers. And I found this shirt at a, uh, a thrift store. And uh, very funny comedian Rob Gleason finally cleared up the meaning of this shirt. He's from Milwaukee. And I asked him, I was like, oh, my God, what does my shirt mean? And he told me George Webb owns a, a string of like hamburger restaurants, but the whole reason it has so much verbiage on there is because the Brewers will never win 12 straight games. So every year, George Webb is just like, I know it. I'm the man who predicts the Brewers are going to win. And he's offering uh, free hamburgers to the city of Milwaukee if the Brewers win 12 straight games. He's like, I'm so confident that they're going to do it. And as a show of my good faith, everybody is going to get one of these free days, hamburgers. They might just. They might just, but, uh, you know, have seems he, like he's, he's also so confident that that won't happen. Exactly. He's hedging his yeah. bets. So yeah. He's kind of. He's so confident that he'll put 13 words <laughs> yeah, on a shirt. Yeah. This day alone, though, is <laughs> so many words on the shirt. That's why I got it. I was like, there's just so much information here. Because he gives you the free hamburgers, but if they, if they get them 12 games, everybody in town's going to go, and they're still going to have to buy the fries and the Coke and everything. Very that's good point. Get, that's how they get that's you. That's how they get you. Yeah, he'll yeah, jack up the fry prices. George Webb is a smart man, that's if you're right. listening. <laughs> Maybe he can sponsor us. Ooh, that'd be cool. I should call him and see if he Seems would. Seems like he's probably dead, right? <laughs> <laughs> George Webb Just predicts that, sure that the goods from the woods will get a thousand <laughs> downloads in one week. And, you know, and if we do free hamburgers from George Webb. Uh, free hamburgers on George Webb. George Webb, anytime. Our kitchen's always cooking. George is my next door neighbor and also George, not, not George, George Webb. Webb. Not George Webb. Webb. Different George. George Coffee. So you got a big house if it stretches all the way to fucking Milwaukee. Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This George, George Coffee is my next door neighbor. You're from uh you're from Massachusetts, right? From Massachusetts. Wareham, Massachusetts. Just, Gateway to Cape Cod. At some point in, in our friendship, I think I jokingly said something about you growing up among the cranberries. I said it just jokingly because that's like a thing people who don't know anything about Cape Cod will just say the way that, you know, people who don't know anything about Alabama would be like, oh, did you grow up in the cotton field or whatever? Yeah. And so I just said it jokingly. And George was like, yeah, I've actually... Didn't you say you were you were chased by ocean spray security at some point? Uh, chased by many. Pe- <laughs> well, the thing was that <laughs> not chased. What it is is that like my neighborhood is like amongst a bunch of cranberry bogs neighborhood I grew up, and so there's all these woods around, and the woods are like half cranberry bogs, and then there's like a little woods, and there'll be like a little housing development, and then like a little kind of buffer of more woods, and then more cranberry bogs. So we would just go out there. And there's, like, these bog roads, that access roads for them. So you just, like, walk along the access roads. But then you'd see a truck come around a corner. And you'd all, like, run and hide. We were never sure exactly why. I, I, I mean, we never got caught. I didn't know that it was so fascist, the whole cranberry <laughs> going on. Because it sounds like being in a POW camp or some shit. Yeah, you had to be careful. We also just did that. I don't know why. As When we were young, we were just, like, hid from anyone. We, I remember we were, like, we would sneak out at night. So we would just hide from every car just because. 
I don't know exactly why. Like, I don't think they would have. It's not like they would have reported. <laughs> it's like, oh, a bunch of teenagers awake at night. <laughs> <laughs> they were like that with the oranges in Florida. Yeah, like the orange groves and stuff like that. Except instead of security, it was just some like looped out old guy with a gun that would shoot anybody <laughs> that's stealing oranges. Hell yeah, it's more effective than a truck. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think they were just driving around checking on them. Also, there's, like, a lot of people on, like, ATVs would just, like, drive their ATVs through there, and so they would, like, kick them out. Yeah. They would drive their ATVs through the uh, cranberry, like, pins or something? Not through like? the bogs, but, like, just through the bog, like, access roads, because they're, oh, okay. they're, like, everywhere. There's a lot of security that goes into cranberry growing. I never realized that. Yeah. You don't want people messing with your, uh, your cran grapes, your cran apples. Well, they don't grow them, like, together. as like some kind <laughs> yeah. of Genetic. agricultural hybrid or something like some Franken. Maybe that's why the security. Maybe they're making some kind of Frankensteinish yeah. fruits that should not be. I've been to Wareham, but I have lived in Weymouth, which ain't uh, Cape Cod, but it's the South Shore. And it is so fucking boring. The kind of shit that we used to do was shit like go to the 24-hour Dunkin' Donuts with my neighbor Kenny and talk about auto parts. Because there was nothing <laughs> else We used to, to just do. walk up to this highway overpass that was near my house and we would just sit there all night and like talk and then occasionally throw sticks at cars. Yeah. We, <laughs> we, used, to, we used to drive all the you way know, to the You know, you can get the electric hour, chair for that. The 24-hour Walmart, because there was no nothing else to do go to the independence mall kingston the Indep independence oh mall. shit the independence mall we were talking about this before the program the independence mall was it was it in kingston it's in like plymouth kingston somewhere and there are those two are like the same place yeah it used to be called something else wasn't it like the kingston plaza oh, yeah. or some shit it did have a like it had like an older name that locals called it and it had its modern name which was uh Independence Mall. Independence, yeah. Like the fucking, what was the other one? It was called the South Shore Plaza. Oh, but yeah, But all the yeah. locals used to call it the Braintree Mall. Braintree Mall. Yeah, and this was the... I've been to the Braintree Mall. The, yeah, the Kingston fucking Kingston Plaza. Mall. It's just awful. Oh, right? my God, the Kingston... It, we used to go in there, and my friend Jay Garrett, there was an action figure place called Pro Figure, where they sold wrestling <laughs> figures, and he used to go in there, and he would have hour-long conversations with this talkative guy that worked at the action figure place. <laughs> Meanwhile, me and my brother out there in a the food court just trying to find some girl to hit on that wasn't a middle school girl. Because there was nothing to do <laughs> with this damn school. place. I mean, that's the only time I went there, I think, was middle was school middle school. school. <laughs> but yeah. it was like this huge city-state, like, shopping plaza. Yeah, there's so many out. of those that are in that area of, like, Massachusetts. They're just, like, nothing for a long time. Then there's just a plaza with, like, a huge parking lot that yeah. will yeah, never be Yeah, they were, like, filled. the size of their own country or something. Yeah. It's, like, the size of, like, a, a bigger, probably, than the Acropolis in Athens. <laughs> and it's just... <laughs> the just it's a huge parking lot. Yeah, it's a huge Walmart, and then there's, like, Home Depots and Red Robins yeah, and all that Red shit like that. But they all have – that's the one thing that I think – they all have parking lots that are just so vast that it doesn't even – yeah. Makes sense. They well, just stretch on. It's like four football fields of We would go there in the middle of the night, lot. too, because I remember there was always you, there was nobody there except the people that worked there. And the other guy also had a Crown Victoria. And we always wanted because he had one of those things that said your car failed inspection because they have the inspection <laughs> yeah. stickers back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, the huh. yeah. The rejection sticker. The rejection sticker, but the My one where you could. just got that on his car for like a year. When I, at the end of when I was living in, nobody could afford the fucking inspections anymore. So everybody would just drive around with, with a sticker yeah. and hope that you didn't get in, caught. In Massachusetts, you have to get your car inspected for, like, safety and for emissions. Like, here in California, they just do, like, a quick just to make sure your VIN, like, matches your registration. Yeah, and they have and the, make the sure smog not tag. Smog. Massachusetts has, like, a safety one and, like, a whole bunch of stuff they go through. Which was the biggest pain in the ass because if you have, yeah, like, a busted like mirror a year. every year, that you'd have to fucking fix that thing. Yeah, and, so they uh, check, like, your mirrors, check your seat. Yeah. Belt, and the economy is so bad, nobody can afford it anymore, so everybody just drives around with an expired sticker. Yeah, I got a ticket once for having an expired sticker, but I was just parked at a parking meter. Like, they gave it to me while I was parked. I got a ticket when I was parked at Braintree Station. Yeah. Because I, I parked there because my car wasn't running so good, and I took the train in to do comedy. And I come back, and they put a the damn sticker yeah. on, on it's it. It's like, how do you know I wasn't there since it expired? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> since it was rejected, yeah. I should say. But yeah, you, so you could go in and get a rejection. Like, if you went in and you didn't match, if it wasn't, like, something where you were going to kill people, like, if it, was, it wasn't something like your breaks, they would just give you a rejection yeah. sticker. Then you had, like, 30 days There was the black one it. and but the red one. my dad would just 
keep getting the rejection stickers because he didn't feel like fixing it. <laughs> yeah, the, there was the black one, which meant you could drive it for like yeah, work yeah. and stuff like that. And then there was the red one, which meant safety, which meant you yeah, weren't supposed to drive that damn thing at all. all. And if you were lucky, you'd do like that and just get the black one yeah. because they wouldn't charge you over and over again. I don't yeah, think like you could go back and get it checked as long as it was in like two months. Yeah. So he would just get it like every two months, and they'd be like, "Oh, you really got to fix your mirror or whatever it was." This is the kind of shit we used to talk about with Kenny at Walmart. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sitting up on the highway over fast. Dunkin' Donuts. You've worked at a Dunkin' Donuts, have you? I have worked at a Dunkin'. Worked Donuts. at a bunch of them, right? Uh, the well, I, I worked at one, but then they they sent me to a couple others to like train because we got all new equipment. They sent me to one inside of the. Uh, casino, Twin River Casino. Oh shit! I did comedy there. Oh really? Yeah, because they have a Catch a Rising Star up in there. Did yeah. you know that? Yeah. I've like I never had been there before, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we, you got to learn the new like cash registers we're getting." So this one guy owned like half of the ones in Rhode Island. It seemed like, and so that he owned all the ones in the Twin River Casino, which is like six of them in this one casino. There's... That's not even that big of a casino. Like it's, it it's used big, to be a, but it it's... was a dog track. It was yeah, one of the dog tracks track. that became like a casino, but it only got uh, like the electronic slot machines. Yeah, because they they stopped doing the dog racing because yeah. of the inhumane stuff. And the yeah, people don't see. They it still have simulcast, I think. Up in yeah, there. it's the same thing as the one in my town, and they used to have a, uh, a dog track and a high life fronton. Yeah. And all the High Life frontons, with the exception of maybe five of them in Florida, closed because, like, High Life is an extremely rigged game. It's, like, yeah. fixed. Lots of organized crime attached to it. And then the dog tracks all closed because people stopped going to them because of the inhumane thing. So it's just, like, simulcasts <laughs> of dog racing. And you'll see the guy that's, like, intently watching it, just, like, just like looking at the screen, and then his dog doesn't win, he just throws all the tickets yeah. up in the air, and I don't know if it's a joke, if that's what he does for fun. <laughs> oh, they get it. They, you, get it you, get, you go to Anna and the horse, there's always that one guy that's way too excited for, like, simulcast at, like, Santa Anita. Yeah, or something. the and OTB, going, yeah. And he's going, come on, you seven horse! Come on, you seven hoes! It's the middle of the fucking night. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, the only way. I gotta say this. Uh, uh, play casinos like that. If you never get high and go to watch simulcast, you ain't really lived. Because I get high and I go to racetracks all the time. Because it, it's just the only way. The casino, the Trin River Casino, before I was doing comedy, I'd already been in there. Because we went there with my neighbor Kenny. And I had some, like, Percocet and some Jim Beam or something. Just walking around, <laughs> like, playing electronic slot machines and all this. Dean Martin's Party and Lobster Mania. Do they have, do they have, uh, <laughs> did they have free food for the uh, electronic slots? No, they had, like, Coke, which yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, neighbor Frank took advantage of. Yeah, yeah. And parts of it you could smoke in. And, you know, if you yeah, smoke. like a big, they, like, walked me around, like, to all the different Dunkin' Donuts is inside of it when I got there. And there was, like, this one room where it's, like, you can smoke in and it's just so thick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, well, no, that, always the problem with casinos is whenever you can smoke in them, people just say, well, I can smoke indoors. So they're just smoking just to smoke. Yeah. yeah. And you just walk in there with, like, the brown finger thing just coming out <laughs> of your <laughs> head. Yeah, they had, they had um, video slots legal in Florida for a very short time. They had to call them internet cafes. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's one way to so put it. So you could do like it would in the front of it. It would just say like it always it be seems like this wasn't legal. <laughs> yeah. So it would, like be a thing that would, it was always attached to some veterans organization. Yeah. Gambling in the South is real yeah, funny. It's like it would be like you know uh, American Veterans Four Seventy Two Internet Cafe Fax copies printing and you would walk in like this wasn't legal it's like playing a slot machine like yeah. no it's a printer yeah but like it was essentially a video slot machine that you could happen to check your gmail on like you go on hotmail <laughs> when you're playing you know lobster mania and uh, and, the, and it was um just all these old ladies and you could smoke at them and they would just be like uh, honey can you go out in the bed parking lot and see if my lights are on i have a thing. i've been here for three years <laughs> yeah, no, and, say, it is hard to pick up women at casinos <laughs> because you get a lot of we would go in and kenny would look maybe there's some fine ladies here because that, that's how kenny talks <laughs> and, and it, it, there was nothing there it was old women and shit if you saw anybody yeah. Yeah, under 30, all... they came with some man, and <laughs> they really weren't that good at the, anyway. at the internet cafe slash video slots place. They had food. It was like Cokes and, and uh, sodas and chips and like beef jerky and stuff like Slim Jims. Ooh. So my friend used to kid that it was all-you-could-eat convenience store. <laughs> it was just like essentially an all-you-could-eat convenience store. And the loophole was was that you would win – technically, you would win gift cards. Did you play scratch tickets at this fucking thing? <laughs> no, you couldn't. But that's the only thing it was missing. You'd win gift cards to like Red Lobster and uh, 
and uh, Lowe's or something like that. And you would just sell it back to them at face value. Oh, okay. And that's how they got around it. And the state of Florida banned them. Yeah. But the law was written so badly that they banned all computers attached to the internet within the state. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have riverboat gambling? Yeah, uh, in Montgomery, uh, yeah. they, you can get a riverboat on the Alabama River and do that. But the funny one, uh, we have a dog track called Victory Land. I, I, how they're able to fucking operate, I have no idea. They found some amazing loophole, and they're, they've been there for years. Is there a comedy club in it? Because a lot of dog tracks are That'd comedy be a, clubs in No, there. I don't think there is. The local one there near my place, kind of like the dog, the dog track you were talking about, they had like a bunch of guys that just looked like broke-ass Larry the Cable guys, and then Jimmy J.J. Walker was headlined. Oh. Oh, wow. Shit, you know what? This was Victory Land. As far as I know, it doesn't have a comedy club, but it, it does. It, it's a dog racing track that you know you can gamble and stuff on. And I don't, like I said, I don't know how they figured out that loophole because gambling is technically illegal in Alabama. And uh, the other one is for years now they've been wrangling with uh, video bingo, and somehow it's gambling, but they, like a, they're a claiming video that it's game bingo. with like a bunch of old women at a church or something. I don't know. Actually, I've never, it's I've never a played. Simulcast but... cast of a bingo. A bingo. bingo. <laughs> yeah. Well, like <laughs> the guy throwing the slips yeah. in the air. Fuck! I said it. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's somehow it's yeah video bingo, and it's pretty clearly <laughs> illegal, but. People have just been sort of doing it for a long time anyway. And this guy who owns Victory Land is this ridiculous evil fuck named uh, Milton McGregor. And so uh, yeah. it's a perfect name. Like, <laughs> like it's funny because it's, it's you know, it's a heel versus heel match. Like, the state of Alabama is fucking corrupt. This guy's corrupt. It's like Alien versus Predator. No matter who wins, we lose. So Milton McGregor was just like, oh, I'm going to build a... <laughs> I'm going to build a whole casino called the Oasis, and the Oasis is filled with uh, video bingo machines. And it's this brand new casino. And I remember the Sounds day. wonderful. The day they opened it, they had the Temptations open it up. You know, they were the Temptations were there singing, and then uh, they were open for about a week. And then the state of Alabama sent in like state troopers and like fucking kicked everybody out. Tried to arrest that guy and just closed it down. But he and so there's in his pod. <laughs> 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 exactly. He escaped back to the volcano he lives in. I'll get you next time. Catch you. <laughs> it's like a little pod with like robot legs <laughs> running away. With a big, big double M on the yeah. side of it. Yeah. <laughs> Blatantly puts his name on the side of it, even though he's a. The point... He's got a logo. <laughs> yeah. And everybody made a logo has to reason. wear it. Yeah. All his like agents and shit. Yeah. yeah. But you nailed me for the last time. <laughs> But a Calvin th- peeing on the state of Alabama. So <laughs> on the back window of his escape pod. Let's see this. How evil, how evil was the state of Alabama that waited until this thing was running for a week before they sent in the cops? They I, did their fucking Darth Vader type yeah, invasion yeah. of the place. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing. And I'm not kidding. Now, you can, uh, if you ever go to Montgomery, Alabama, drive 10 minutes east, and there is this beautiful, literally golden casino that... There is no one in the parking lot. And this has been empty since 2010, I think. It's just sitting there. Anybody could uh, start it back up if they legalize gambling, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So people just have to go to Victory Land. could make it into a big internet cafe, though. You could. <laughs> 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 yeah, the world's largest 10-story <laughs> internet cafe hotel. Yeah. This is a lot of people checking their, Check their AOL. Check <laughs> their AOL. <laughs> This is a lot of people on Instagram. I Messenger. am, in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I've, really played, I've only done bingo once, and it was at an American Legion. And instead of winning, pri- the prizes that you'd win is that you'd win like steaks and cuts of meat. Ooh, yeah, that's outstanding. That's like you'd win bad, a raw yeah. chicken or something like that. Was this like a Thanksgiving Funny. thing or some shit? No, it was like every week. Turkey shoot. No, it was every How raw week. was it? Was it alive? How, how raw was this? No, record? it was like, you know, in a package. <laughs> gotcha. It said, like, Purdue on the side of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time I gambled. It was the time I uh, worked in that casino, and I just gambled away my tip money that I had earned that day. <laughs> <laughs> what was your Which vice? Which was, like, $3. On, I put it into, like, penny slots or whatever, the, like, the cheap ones, and I got up to $5, and then I Oh, did you it. play them one penny at a time? Or one or two. It was like ten. You could put like the you do that thing where you put them on the rows. Like you can put yeah, like yeah. five cents per like diagonal, and then you can like buy it. No, I used to do that. I just sit there high and I just press the button over and over again and just bet a penny and see if I can get yeah. it up to five and then see how long it takes to lose the whole thing. Yeah, that's basically what I did. And then I I was like, well, I've never 
Like, this is probably the only time I'm going to be in a casino, so I was going to, like, just gamble away, like, I don't know, another $10, $20 or something. And I went <laughs> to the ATM, and the ATM had a $3, like, surcharge. I was like, I'm not going to pay money to lose money. So I just <laughs> left. <laughs> like, why would the ATM at the casino not just be free? Like, you'd think they'd want... It should give you a dollar when you take out a dollar just yeah. to encourage you. Yeah. So wait, why were there six Dunkin' Donuts there in one so casino? There were so many. That's oh, the you, thing. Oh, no, yeah, do you not understand? Yeah. That's the thing with Dunkin' Donuts is they will put them anywhere. Yeah, if you ever <laughs> live. six under yeah. one roof. No, it, I guess when, a, I, when I lived in Weymouth, if I had a, like a AAA <laughs> map, I could put a compass on where I was living and draw a circle and there was at least five Dunkin' <laughs> yeah, Donuts within everywhere. a one mile radius of where they're like, just everywhere. they're across the street from each yeah, other, across the street from each other, like under each other. Like <laughs> there's some that I've seen in Boston, like in subway stations that don't even seem yeah, like you just could like have a counter a business. Yeah, no, say, like, there's one like that's just in a support pillar or something. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like downtown crossing station or something. It's just like yeah, it's been there forever. Yeah, you walk through. There's just like an octagon shaped like support pillar, basically. <laughs> That's, that's so maybe only like it's maybe only like fifteen feet across. It just is a Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, like it's a, a Dunkies, as the local say. Yeah. There's a Dunkies there. A that's dun- the thing is they're very like modular. I guess you'd say like each one like they just they find a space and then they decide how much of a Dunkin' Donuts they can put in. So like the <laughs> the ones in the casino like there was one that had everything and had like the breakfast sandwiches, the coffee, the, like everything. And then there's one that just had like a tiny donut case and like two coffee <laughs> yeah, there's machines. The, there's the one near the front when you come in, and then there's yeah, the there's big a, one in the back. Yeah, the big one that in the back is like that has the what's so the, the hot more dog place. Nathan's. Nathan's it has Nathan's, Nathan's hot dogs in yeah, the back too, dog like a Chinese a food. Yeah, <laughs> and then like depending on how much room they have, the the Dunkin' Donuts will either make the donuts the, there or they'll like bring them in from a, another Dunkin' Donuts, like a bigger one. Yeah. Like the one I worked at was in a mall, so it was just like this tiny kiosk. So we just got the donuts in in the morning. And then like the next step up was they would get blank donuts in in the morning, and then they would frost them at, at the location. I didn't know they made blank donuts. Yeah. <laughs> like the factory. <laughs> then And then like the big the big locations that are like the big standalone drive throughs made like all their own donuts. But then some of them, they would just get in like the shell, the filled ones, Except with no filling and no frosting. <laughs> they sent us a whole rack of those by accident one day at my Dunkin' Donuts. They just blank shells. And they're and defla- we like they, just, they look deflated essentially. They look pretty much the same. Uh, they're just they're they are not quite as like plump, I guess. I never mean, <laughs> the they frosted them. I thought that they had ones that were bakery ones, because you could see some of them had a bakery yeah. in the back, and then you had small ones, and I thought they just delivered to the to the smaller one, yeah, I they didn't deliver the frost them. Well, that's the thing is, it all kind of depends on wh- how big, how much room they have. So the bi- like the little little ones just get everything delivered without anything. The medium sized ones get the like blanks delivered, and then they frost them themselves there. And then the big ones do everything. So it's like there's like a scale of like <laughs> and some and like the medium sized ones. Some of them like bake their own bagels, and some of them get the bagels in. And like they're very good at figuring the, the what they can level. do in this space. So you're saying the is if egg. you if you work in a Dunkin' Donuts, you want to work at the tiniest yeah. one possible because they do. I mean, the I least. guess you could just get paid to frost donuts too, which is probably be fun. Yeah. There was one. There was one in Weymouth, which was supposed to be the busiest Dunkies in America, and it had like a double drive-through. Oh, but man. it really wasn't that busy except in the mornings because we, we used to go there at night because it was right near where I lived, and we'd hang out with Kenny there. And and like the police would come in, and it was like where they would change shifts. There was so many. It kept me out of trouble sometimes because if, if people uh, called the cops on me the cops would recognize me from the Dunkin' Donuts so I'd get out of trouble I was in the parking lot fixing my uh, a mirror on my car which was busted and so they had had break-ins in the parking lot and it's because it's like a police state there some woman calls in there's somebody in the parking lot and they come out with dogs and guns and shit and I get out of the car and one of the cops like, this is the guy from Dunkin' Donuts. And then it's like a cartoon. They all went home. <laughs> so they keep you out of trouble to have the police know you. How many Dunkin' Donuts are there in Cape Cod? There has to be at least Cape one Cape Cod's Dunkin a lot Donuts. like, people think it's like fancy, but it's not. It's like, in the same way like Hollywood seems fancy. Okay. But there's really only like 10% of Hollywood that's the fancy part. And then the rest is just like garbage which is like <laughs> the same thing with cape cod where it's like you have the fancy like towns or the fancy little neighborhoods but the rest is just nothingness it's like, like outer boring. outer suburb where nobody yeah lived. yeah basically just boring so suburb. garbage and what was it like garbage and just like there's nothing there it's garbage and it's like, like head shops and and well no it's mostly just like places. strip malls and oh. like shitty kind of neighbor- not like bad neighborhoods just like boring like suburban 
kind of neighborhoods woods. that aren't yeah and then just woods and not even like yeah. cool woods woods where it's just like mostly like underbrush so you can't oh, it's okay. not like woods where you, you can know, walk uh, through and enjoy it's just like a lot of them have some like, whippets a lot of them outer <laughs> like Whippet south cans. shore <laughs> suburbs like that look like they were just carved out of a chunk of woods like marsh yeah. field and all that yeah shit. they mostly i think they just were yeah, <laughs> they just find some old bog roads and build some houses. Yeah, that's, that's actually what they look like—old yeah. bog roads. Everything okay. there looks like old bog. It, it's, it's all sand. Fun. Like all the ground is just sand. Yeah, it's kind of fun to drive around in in the middle of the night again if the cops ain't after you. But just because it has that kind of like haunted New England feel to it. But other yeah, than that, there's also a lot of Cape Cod has that feel of like it used to be a thing in the '50s kind of look. Right. Like, all yeah. the businesses are like, man, this used to be a real hip vacation yeah, spot. Yeah, when, uh, when a Kennedy is <laughs> wet. Yeah, support and all that shit. Especially Wareham because Wareham used to be like it used to be where you drove through and like stopped and got your like fried shrimp and all this. But then they built the interstate and just like kind of bypassed it. So right. now like all the main roads have like businesses where they're like, oh, ice cream twenty years ago was a big thing for us. <laughs> <laughs> now we also sell like pictures of lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to buy one, please? <laughs> like that it all has that kind of feel of like, oh, this there must have been a swinging boom time for everything here. Yeah, like, they had they have that in Florida. That's most of Alabama, too, yeah. I feel like. That's just a like, lot of the damn country as yeah. it is. I wonder yeah. if that was ever a thing or if it's just like was there ever a boom time for all those businesses or they just seem that They sad always that say way. that they always say like before the interstate was finished and you had to drive cross country yeah. and those all them roadside things. Things. Right, yeah. Yeah. Drive through. yeah, it seems like the America just kind of peaked in like 1955 based on how many abandoned towns that look like abandoned roadside really attractions. Yeah. Roadside attractions, old casinos. We, yeah. went, we went to saw the wrestling at that casino out in Commerce, uh-huh. and it has like this huge like oh, yeah, Egyptian that, like Near yeah. Eastern motif. I've driven past that a couple yeah, times. And it's like, it's like weird. This, this was probably something movie stars went to in the 40s, and now it's like a rundown old casino that was having Hollywood championship wrestling in one of its rooms. <laughs> Did you ever have a experience with Moxie? Yeah. I remember having it as a kid, but they haven't had it. Like, I haven't had it now that I would remember what yeah, it tastes it's like. It's one of those things that was big in the 20s, and it became yeah. like a phrase, which is why you'll see old people like Nick Bonkwinkle say you haven't got the Moxie and shit like that. But, yeah. <laughs> like, it does have a really good can. Yeah, like it's a, got an it's orange cool label can. With but, a cool like, they revived like it. They revived it for like historical purposes, yeah. so you can occasionally get it. I like found it at Bevmo places. and tried oh, it. Oh shit! Yeah, they have it at Bevmo out how here. Is it? Well, the thing I always hear about Moxie is that it's, it's supposed to be it, gross. It's gross. I remember it, not liking it when I was a kid. I thought it, I that was, remember, I was it like tasted 10, like, so like any soda that wasn't. It's 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 normal. clove tasting, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah, it is a little like clove that. tasting. You just hit this wall of bitterness. Like yeah, it's like super bitter. Yeah, like you drink it at first and it tastes good, and then all of a sudden it's like. Very bitter. It's like a regional. Like, it's like a New Hampshire. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Oh, I've New never New had it. I think yeah. it. I think at one point, in like the twenties or something, it was national. Because yeah. like, didn't it still have that old fashioned thing with sodas where there was like supposed to be like a health tonic property? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it so. does seem that way. Yeah, I've never been to New England, so uh, Moxie's the closest. I, <laughs> the closest I've come Mind to. Have you ever had a Dunkin' Donuts? Oh yeah. Then Dunkin that's Donuts? the closest. Yeah, you've that's come. pretty close. Yeah. I yeah. never. I never went to. Um, Massachusetts much. We always went north when we were New visiting. Hampshire. Yeah, like New Hampshire and uh, and Maine. We'd always end up in Wells Beach, which was kind of... Uh, oh, is that the little strip uh, in Maine that's got a sea coast? No, that's that's Kenny Bunkport. Okay. Um, but oh, like Home Wells, of Bushes. Yeah, Wells is kind of and like... the Trolley the, Museum. It's like the working class like element of it. Where I don't remember it very much, except for there was like everything sold like saltwater taffy and just oh, like saltwater taffy, like, the whole thing. like yeah. fried tire chunks, you know? Oh, <laughs> like do you just... mean like funnel cake and they call it fried dough? Yeah, yeah, it's just all sorts of like just beachside stuff that yeah. like back in the fifties, this place was probably the bee's knees. Like this was the place that everybody went to. It probably had a Ferris wheel. Like people would just go to Wells Beach. Now it's just like. Maybe oh. I think there might be a motorcycle rally there yeah. or something like that. All them, no, all, that's Weir's Beach. My all mistake. them, all them, like like 
uh, seafront places, like again, like Hull and places like oh. at Nantasket, Revere Beach. They used to be like seaside, like Coney Island type amusement parks, and they'd have Ferris wheels and roller coasters and shit. And now they're mostly just like condos and shit, and you'll still have old stands and stuff there. Yeah, Co- Coney Island's like that too. Like yeah. the only thing I remember from Coney Island was that the cyclone was there, and then they had this one uh, game there called Shoot the Freak. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just this guy like barking through like a mi- megaphone, just like shoot the freak. Everybody wants to shoot the freak. You sir, do you want to shoot the freak? And shoot the freak was basically you got a paintball gun, and some guy just came out and like that women's self defense class body armor, and you just shoot him. There wasn't anything particularly freaky about him. Yeah, that sounds like fun because the only thing I ever shot at there was that thing where you <laughs> shoot the star out with the Tommy gun. Yeah, yeah. it's like a BB gun. It's automatic. <laughs> Did he have any exposed skin? No. What, Why were, would he? Were people what are you going to do? Hurt the freak? He's, gonna, he's, he's not getting paid that much. It's what a dollar a pop. Thing. No, I mean he's <laughs> definitely in on it. Yeah. No, I'm asking. I'm asking it's a that. Work, they Rivers. captured it's a work. it. I know it's a work, and I'm asking that to lead to the next part of that question, which would be. I am I to assume that everybody was shooting at his eyes and like vulnerable places. No, he was like maybe wearing... not everyone's a monster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe, they just wanna, maybe you want to shoot at a guy, but not to injure. Yeah, there's a certain <laughs> formality or etiquette that comes with shooting. Shoot freak. The freak. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like he looked like a chivalry. A, he looked like a hybrid of the Michelin Man and the little guy from Excite Bike. That's what he looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever go to a baseball game there at Coney Island? Yeah. No. No, I, I, there's the Coney Island Cyclones. Yeah, yeah. What are the Coney Island Cyclones versus the Staten Island Yankees or something? No, it was the something Iron Birds. Hmm. Oh, I'm only good at Southern Minor League Baseball. Not. I don't even know. Did you ever go from. to a Red Sticks game? Go to a <laughs> Columbus Red Sticks. Jack, like, Jack, Jack Wareham Gateman game. Do they have? Uh, like, that's is that even AAA team? or is that like that booze it league? It's a Cape Cod <laughs> baseball league. It's like this. Uh, this where there's a bunch of people. Oh, the CCBL, of course. <laughs> but we wear him as the gate man. <laughs> and we're like the only. Of course. <laughs> For a second, yeah, and the big scared. league, son. The only person. I don't At know. Moxie Stadium. I don't Moxie know enough Stadium. about. Enough it's got about the same dimensions as Fenway for when you get called up. <laughs> <laughs> but they had their. I was always happy because they were the only one of the only teams that had like a their own name because we're gate, gateway to Cape Cod, so they were the Gate Men. But That's, the rest of them were just like the Yankees, like the Yarmouth Yankees or something. Were they, like the were Dennis, they, like were they Java Red teams, Sox. like the freaking uh, the Washington Generals or something that just came in to play heels? To go against the no, gateway. no, they were like real teams. There was like few people that I know. Mo Vaughn was one of the people that was so used. Oh, to Mo, Mo Vaughn did the Wareham circuit Gateman. of like booze league because yeah. he would. There's like the, a few other people that I don't know. The Brockton about Rocks, remember. remember that one? The Brockton Rocks that were named after crack oh. cocaine. It was like <laughs> they weren't awful. even they weren't even like rookie league because they weren't part of like MLB. It was just like that booze. Oh league yeah, for oh, with the drug indie leagues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like the Portland Sea Dogs or yeah. something. No, like No, because they they were actual. There were Marlins, I think, and then there were the Red. Socks. So they were essentially just like little league for grown up guys and guys that got kicked out of the yeah and guys with drug problems. And yeah, shit. so like Jose Canseco would play for the Brockton. Rocks he was probably too big. It was more like Mo Vaughn. <laughs> yeah, Mo Vaughn was pretty big though. Mo Vaughn was pretty big, but it it's was like sort people of that like... are still in college. I think. Oh, okay. They're like this is what they do for the summer. Yeah. Oh, okay. They would always announce. I remember that they they had a really good announcer. Really it seemed to be going to waste just announcing. <laughs> the games. But they all had their colleges announced. They'd be like so and so from Minnesota State. The only minor league baseball game I ever went to was the Columbus Red Sticks. They played on the campus of Columbus State University, but they were they were this this horrible minor league team. They were around from 1992 till 2002, and I went with Nerm Sturgis actually to a uh, Red Sticks game. I think we spent no time in the stands. We were walking around the uh, like the little circle underneath you, the stands. You want to do when you're a kid? Yeah, I, I maybe watched a grand total of. 10 minutes of this baseball game and we're wandering around under the stands next to the concession stands and then we run into the mascot who was this uh fox he was like a stuffed giant fox man uh-huh and uh he was just hanging out underneath the <laughs> yo, he was like walking around like a cigarette. <laughs> well no he was like walking around waving to kids Shrink and stuff keystone light <laughs> oh boy <laughs> we started throwing uh garbage at him oh that wasn't a nice <laughs> thing to do to him. why is that fox? necessary <laughs> did he catch you and say you no. don't fuck with the fox well, no that, that's the thing uh we we were uh the foxes we're, were like five-year-olds <laughs> we were the fox is cunning though when he gets yeah. angry 
angry. Yeah. That's what I think. It's we we were lie. standing next to the uh, next to the trash can, just picking out cans, just chucking it at him while he was trying to take pictures of this kid. And so then he just started coming after us. Like he turned and started walking towards us, and we just started running. And we we're just like running around this thing, and we finally like slip into the gift shop, and we each bought little tiny baseball bats, just in case he like tried to attack us. Oh, Jesus, and and you guys had money too. God. <laughs> Money and terror. We used to do this thing <laughs> at the Gate Men games when we, whenever there was a foul ball or a home run, which was way less often than the foul ball. <laughs> um, we, like all the little kids would go run and try to find it because what they would do is if you brought it back, they would give you a handful of candy. Oh, nice. So like as soon as a foul got hit, you like rushed at, down the like stands, down the little stairs, like run. And there was a lot of like, there's like this essentially like a briar patch on like one side. And uh-huh. then there was like... Just all these buildings on the other side, so you'd have to like run around and try to find it uh-huh. in like th- at night in just like a thicket, <laughs> <laughs> and then you could bring it back for candy. Our local, our local um, minor league team was the uh, Brevard County Manatees. Their uh, mascot was a manatee named Hugh Manatee. Oh, no. He was killed Hugh by a motorboat. I was just about manatee. to say. <laughs> <laughs> he had a bunch of gashes on the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember one time there was a guy that uh, was going for a um, humanity. Like, little, the little that. kid was going for the foul ball. <laughs> that little sounds kid, like furry shit. <laughs> the little kid would go for the, was going for the foul ball this one time, and this guy in a Tommy Bahama shirt like went over the kid and grabbed it, and his dad, the kid's dad, just punched him right in the face and knocked him out. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> But um, was the kid's dad also wearing a Tommy Bahama shirt? No, nah, I think he was wearing like a big well, dog the humanity shirt. Yeah, that didn't yeah. involve the, the manatee, did <laughs> it? No, but the manatee was great. And there were all oh, well, that's okay. two separate so stories. But I always but well, while well, that was going on, the manatee was great. I thought so, you like, were, I, I was in the background. The manatee knows was, was existing. The manatee. I was ready for <laughs> hu- I was ready for humanity to knock somebody yeah. out. Yeah, yeah I right. thought it was I like a skit, like they do with a chicken and shit like that. Or we're gonna find out. And that young man turned out to be the human humanity. Up. <laughs> no, I was talking you know about humanity in an, abje- in an abstract sense. Um, oh, okay. but no, so humani- someone yelled out, oh, the humanity after he knocked <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. That's what happened when it come out. Everybody's like, oh, the humanity. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did, I did see burnt a dirigible. Yeah. <laughs> 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 seven, then it's all these... <laughs> they, they yell, "Oh, the humanity!" And then they play John Fogerty's center field. <laughs> no, I remember there were like little bastards like you and Nurm that would just <laughs> like would mess with humanity because humanity. He would be there, post <laughs> photos with <laughs> the <little> kids. <laughs> Playing God, just trying to... <laughs> and, little kid, and, and little kids would hug humanity's leg. And then and other kids would drive stomp. their motorboats over him. Yeah. <laughs> so you little bastards would chase around like, the mascot, right? And there were always they always had, like, retired people working as the ushers at yeah. the stadium. This... And there was this one usher that was, like, he had the Harley Race voice. He was just very... Very deliberate. Known what fuck with the manatee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he was like this little wily guy, wiry guy that would wear like just you know black socks and khaki shorts, just golf clothes. And he, but one time he would always get in these kids' faces, and he would always reduce these ten year olds to tears for messing with the manatee. With the humanity. The humanity. Yes. Wow, he fucking dressed them down. You don't fuck with humanity. He's, yeah, exactly. He's the spokesman That's the for humanity tonight. Although, it's actually although very the worst, good, Rob. It's very although good. Although the worst one I ever saw was that there was a hockey, minor league hockey team in Macon. I used to live near Macon. And they were called the Macon Whoopi. <laughs> <laughs> and their mascot was a bird. A whoopee bird. I don't, I don't even know what a whoopee oh, bird no, is. A whoopee pie. Yeah, just all these guys from like Russia that are like playing would, minor league hockey. Like Who do you play them. for? I play for the Mekon Lurpi. <laughs> <laughs> and their rivals were the Birds Jacksonville stork, Lizard right? Kings, which are the second worst. <laughs> Wait, for they Jim Morrison? Jim Morrison yeah. as a mascot? But he's not even from Jacksonville. Yeah. Say. It was just like the matchup. This was like on a hockey rink, they were just having a matchup of the two worst team names ever, you know? Yeah, the Jackson Jacksonville should have been the Jacksonville 38 Specials, man. Yeah, exactly. Or uh, the, the Jacksonville Skinner. Jacksonville Skinner. Yeah, yeah. Thir- why would you do 38 Special when you could do Skinner? Well, because that's a, to be different. Skinner's not a, you know, it would be easier to put guns on a jersey than uh, than licensing. Yeah, and, besi- and besides, Skinner, you'd have to, like, make a professional team for that. Like, 38 Specials right. definitely, like, beer league hockey. I 
like to. What, 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 Ooh, what was that? Oh. Hold on, go check our. Uh, hey, we got a new issue of the Disgrace Land Picky Can I, I get the for... funnies? Huh? Can I get the funnies? Yeah, yeah. I want to see if, if my suggestions made pluggers this week. I always forget that the name of the town is also the name of our house. Yeah. Disgrace Land. Yeah. Well, it's the, it's the village. The town gets the name it's of the castle. It's sort of medieval, really. We actually, medieval rules apply here. We're under manoral law. Yeah, and exactly. All this shit. But there's yeah. no Dunkin' Donuts here. This is a type So of there's no Dunkin' villages. Donuts, but we do have that, what is that, Prima Noctra or Fuera de Senia? <laughs> you know that thing? <laughs> when we get our choice of the women of the town, so let us move to Disgrace Land. That's right. Lexington, Mississippi. A Mississippi man woke up in a body bag at a funeral home yeah. uh, as funeral well, workers. that's a place to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this story. As yeah. funeral home workers prepare to embalm him. <laughs> How is that still happening? Undertaker involved in this. <laughs> How is that? <laughs> that's a problem that should have been solved in like... My Undertaker is in Lexington, Mississippi. <laughs> this poor bastard, what a cat. This poor bastard lost a casket match. <laughs> And we took it literally. <laughs> oh, God. Walter Williams, 78 of like, He's going to go. I mean, he's going to go any minute. This is just a weird lucky break at yeah, the end. Yeah, the here. life expectancy in Mississippi is like 51. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah it is medieval he's there. Living on borrowed time. Yeah, Walter Williams, 78 of Lexington, appeared to have died at his home Wednesday night. The coroner came to the house and pronounced him dead at 9 That's p.m. That's the first time where appeared is accurate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where it's not just a technicality, like, no, it was just appearances only. <laughs> yeah, it's foreshadowing. <laughs> Quote, I stood there and watched them put him in a body bag and zip it up, William's nephew, uh, Edie Hester, told, or Eddie Hester, rather, uh, told WAPT. Williams was taken. Eddie Hester. Eddie Hester was taken. Uh, Williams was taken to Porter and Son's funeral home, and they were getting ready to embalm him, and that's when he started kicking inside the body bag. <laughs> Fuck. That is horrific. <laughs> They should have like a That's scanner what or something. You get you bring for a body not in, like, just run the it through something. It was cool. It's like, where did they pick him up? Wrestling or something? This guy an old Jabba or some shit? Was this Buck Zoomhoff or something? <laughs> I love this. Quote: He was not dead. Long story short. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Funeral home manager like Byron Jesus. Porter I'd said, be "Way more concerned if he was in that whole story had happened. Yeah, he was just kicking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turns out he was dead. He was Imagine just if they kicking. killed him, like he kicked and oh, he croaked and said, like, no, really, you don't really have to tell anybody.' I guess he was alive five minutes ago. Yeah, you could just cover it up as like, a funeral home. After he woke up, he was rushed to a nearby hospital, Holmes County Coroner Dexter Howard said it's possible that Williams' pacemaker shut down and then started back up again. Quote: It was a miraculous moment," said Howard. Now here's why I love newspaper writing. It's quotes all that and it says it was a miraculous moment said howard who is an elected official and not a medical doctor so like whoever wrote this story is just bringing attention to the fact that like you don't even have to be a doctor to be a coroner in this town you don't have to know what a pulse is he's just an elected official like this well, is just some it, it is medieval because he's talking about miracles and things yeah like that. yeah <laughs> did he say it was an omen at the end of it or some shit yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly the crops will be better <laughs> 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 Howard, who has held the post of chief coroner since 2002 and was deputy coroner before that, said he... 2002 vi- sounds like machine politics here. Yeah, it's bullshit. Uh, visited Williams in the hospital. So the coroner, who apparently doesn't know how to check a sorry, fucking buddy. pulse. Yeah, sorry, buddy. Yeah. Uh, you remember the James Bond I'm withdrawing movie? my support in the election for you, <laughs> city coroner guy. Dexter Howard. Dexter Howard. <laughs> Did y'all make those names up, Rivers? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Dexter uh, Howard. It's like no. Dragnet. You're switching Dexter the names Howard. to fix it. Uh, no, that's real. To protect the guilty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. So if you're listening in Lexington, Mississippi, and I know we got a few Mississippi listeners, you need vote this sorry son of a bitch out of office. Yeah. Get I feel Quincy. like you should also get a better doctor. Get Quincy. Remember, uh, what's his name there? Jack Klugman? Yeah, yeah. Quincy? That was good <laughs> shit. He never <laughs> fucked up in Barry nobody alive <laughs> and that is number one responsibility for a good coroner can, and then he could lecture you about not taking drugs the goods from the woods is, is officially prepared <laughs> <laughs> the goods from the woods is pre- do drugs want to do it sam life is just too precious <laughs> we're officially prepared to as a show endorse any candidate who runs against dexter howard in lexington mississippi i would endorse any doctor that besides that one doctor also. It doesn't, you don't have to be a doctor you just have to uh in lexington know. mississippi be the doctor is probably some guy that's like it's faith healing. Like yeah, I was gonna just say like, he, he shakes bones over a fire and chants. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll put leeches on them. <laughs> y'all, y'all got the leeches? Got the roots and the leeches? I don't know what'll cure you. Snails.
Yeah. <laughs> They're like leeches, but cheaper. <laughs> cheaper leeches. Snail. Y'all go over to the bait store. We need Snails some night won't... crawlers and throw them in his pants. <laughs> Snails don't crawl over dead body. <laughs> we got to weigh him. They know. We got to weigh him first. If he weighs a little bit less right now, we know his soul has gone to heaven. <laughs> Therefore, he's dead. <laughs> What's it? What, 21 grams? Is that right? I don't know. That's you know the, the measurement of a soul? It's like that. That's well, like it's a that, movie. Well, no, no, that's the, that was what that movie was. Uh, I don't know if was that's what movie the movie was written in the about. Middle Ages or something? What the fuck movie was this? Yeah, they just found the script. <laughs> no, it's a... It's yeah, my monk. Come here. <laughs> supposedly, when you... If I don't make it here, I'll take it to the fucking Byzantine Empire and see if I can get it done there. Supposedly, when you, when you die, uh, like if you died on a scale, right when you die... That's how most people you, die. You, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On a giant scale, you lose uh, 21 grams. Yeah, that's all your poop. That's poop. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's exactly <laughs> it. Who died on a scale to figure this shit? Is this, this is something we know about because of the Nazis? Probably some trucker. Some Was trucker this the Nazis? Died on a, is this yeah. Nazi scale. medical experimentation? He did too much, uh, too many greenies in his... He's just on one of those explosion. giant scales. <laughs> the whole truck and, and everything. Just like, why is this truck oh, yeah, 21 just, grams? Did he die in a way <laughs> station? Yeah, and they just subtracted him. I wonder what it costs. About 21 grams over. If you die in a way station, it's like a... Oh, I believe he's dead, uh, but we need to double check. He was Can actually over the, the limit before. And then, before. That's, it right. was a miracle. That's it how they miracle. discovered it, because it was over the limit, and then it went down to under the limit. And it was, they were going to say congratulations, but they, then they saw he was dead. Get the divining rod. We'll see if he's alive. <laughs> hey, will you embalm him? Oh, I'm busy. <laughs> we're preparing for a casket match with Kamala. <laughs> <laughs> Rowan County, North Carolina. Officers with the Landis Police Department have arrested a school bus driver for allowing middle school students to smoke pot on the bus. Well, time out. Oh, no. yeah, I had a bus time driver. Out. Was that the Atlanta police who who, who arrested this? Uh, <laughs> Ro- Rowan <laughs> County, North Carolina. Did they row in, in a boat? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> Rowan County, what was this now? North Carolina. And, Landis. And, and they got... Oh, Landis. Landis police. The, the name of the town is Landis. And and they were smoking pot on a school bus. Yeah, they arrested the bus driver because he was letting kids smoke pot on the bus. Uh, so that's that's. I that's, like this bus driver. Yeah, exactly. He uh, he seems <laughs> he seems like a good. The dude. guy on the Simpsons. Yeah, he sounds like Otto. Exactly. This yeah, is the man, real life Otto. Oh shit! Here comes the fuzz. Put that shit up. <laughs> Burn some incense. Make it look like we're doing something else. I love this name. I didn't make this up. Police say they received a call from Matt Crome, an assistant <laughs> principal at <laughs> Corther Lipe Middle School. Matt what, Crome. There is no the better name. Called what the Corther fuck? Lipe. <laughs> well, 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 well. These are just sounds at this <laughs> yeah. point. <laughs> Corther hyphen Lipe. <laughs> Corther Lipe Middle School. What, the, what but, language is that? <laughs> I don't know. No, that's uh, that's people name. Where? Lipe? Space? Did, what do you know name? The Lipe? South. People have stupid names in this. Like out. Matt Chrome. Not Matt Chrome. Yeah, but they have vowels in their names. Not Matt Chrome. Matt to... Chrome is like a can of spray paint. <laughs> Matt Chrome Did... was like a <laughs> on a soap opera. <laughs> Did you guys have like the male Rust-oleum assistant principal? Matt Chrome. Yeah. <laughs> the assistant principal who was like the, the male, like the discipline principal. Yeah. Dude, like my, ours was uh, Mr. Weeks. We had Mr. You know. we, we had Mr. Coffee. Oh, oh. Yeah. And so do we. Is that, is that your kid? No, no, coffee spelt like the drink coffee. Oh, okay. Like guy coffee from Mempo? Really just a misspelling. Yeah. We had ca- but, Mr. Farr, and he was just enormous. He was like seven feet tall. Right. And so, huge. And they always used to be gym teachers. Right, yeah. right. So everybody had this guy. Now imagine your guy is named Matt Chrome. Well, he used to be like a pro wrestler or a <laughs> UFC guy. <laughs> or he does sound like a jobber. Thing. And then he changed his name to it to be more like authentic. He's like, nah, man, I'm in beast mode. I'm Matt Chrome now. Life's my beast mode. And then he became a gym teacher and then an assistant principal. Uh, but, yeah, they received a call from Matt Chrome uh, in reference to a report of students smoking marijuana on a school bus February 20th. What a fucking snitch he is. I know. I know. Chrome told- whoever's just driving behind the bus. <laughs> Sturgis. And again, <laughs> he's sticking his head out the sunroof what trying to get that? his contact high. He probably drives a Miata or something like that. <laughs> And again, the, or a Chrysler Sebring. I didn't make this next name up either because it's the perfect name for a bus driver that lets you smoke weed on the bus. Chrome told police that the driver of the bus, 30 year old Brian David Overcash. <laughs> 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 I didn't know that was 
an actual name. I know. This bowl is overcast. It sounds like a it's bad guy. It's not just cashed. It's Forecast overcast. Is overcast. It, it sounds like a bad guy in Richie Rich or something. <laughs> and he's always he's like one of those those like southern guys that uses his first and middle name. Yeah, Brian David. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm not Brian. Don't call me Brian. I'm uh, Brian David. Brian David, David Overcash. Brian David. Brian David Overcash informed him after completing his route that several students on the bus had been smoking marijuana. Chrome said that all drivers are directed to immediately stop the bus and call 911 if a crime occurs. Overcash told investigators that although he personally saw the students smoking on the bus, he thought that there was, quote, no point in stopping the bus or calling 911 since, quote, the students would just deny it anyway. Sounds like this is the regular bus driver. Yeah, so he was like, just oh, what like, you, uh, fucking... that's any school bus yeah, driver. Exactly. Do, do they really it's care? Like they're just going to deny it. He also told officers the students had smoked marijuana on the bus two or three times previously. Police said they identified four students. In the case, Overcash was arrested, Brody, and charged with four counts of contributing to the Wait, delinquency now, of a this, minor. Did this boy even do something? Was he just driving the bus? They're getting high on there, and he's just trying to fucking do his damn just, job. Yeah. I don't think I can picture any of my bus drivers ever doing anything more about that than going, <laughs> oh, come on. Stop it. <laughs> stop like, it. This is as far as I can yeah, see them going. How much money did they make? They're going to pull over and stop kids from smoking weed like they're fucking smoking the bear or some shit. Yeah. They're not getting paid that much. <laughs> I, rode the mid- I rode the bus for a short time in the middle school a very short time and we had mr bill who was the bus driver <laughs> was doing before. the little clay man <laughs> no mr bill oh, no. Get to school. No, was, this guy was just like <laughs> just, he's gonna be mean to me just this like <laughs> mr bill and he was this big <laughs> he was like this big he's this big fat old southern guy with like Always wore sh- like white, <laughs> white crew like <laughs> socks and slippers, <laughs> like the house shoes, and like Bus just an undershirt. <laughs> and, it's like, and he would just sit there and just be like, and just get one of those nasty D Napoli cigars, just not smoke. Oh but just yeah, on, driving uh, the bus. I like those. <laughs> just like, all right, well, hey, you kids, what are y'all doing? And they'd be like, f- there'd be a fight. And he would just stop the bus and just watch. <laughs> but, no, I'm going to let you kids settle it like men. <laughs> we had that guy. I think his name was Mr. Watley. And uh, he had, <laughs> if you've ever seen Breaking Bad, he had the boots that the twins had, like these giant, like, uh, steel-tipped, like, skulls on the end of his cowboy boots. Yeah. They were fucking awesome. Did he wear them with basketball shorts? No, he would wear them with jeans, and he was just this, like, you know, you could tell he was just like, you know, don't, don't row me, man. You don't want to fuck. Like you know, like he j- looked like he just got out of the joint and shit, but he was driving kids around. Uh, and then we also had Miss Philpot, who was tiny and loud. She'd drive the bus and then just yell in the back. She was she was great. Apparently, Mister Bill, uh, big She's not a there real was man. This big kid. There was just like this big kid that played football oh, no. named Matt Meddy <laughs> that like was like picking on. What are we gonna do, Mister Bill? He's gonna be big, Jimmy. <laughs> and Mr. and Mr. Bill like stopped the bus, and he just, he just like shows up. He like he he stops the bus in the middle of the state highway. That's like the main like drag of the of the town. And he just walked to the back, and he walked up to this kid, Matt May. He's just like, "You keep picking on him. I'm gonna pick you up." And I'm going to throw you through this windshield, you little <laughs> bastard. <laughs> and then just went back to driving. I like that guy. Yeah. Remember the craziest thing that happened on our bus was just that once the drive shaft of the bus just <laughs> fell out. <laughs> We were just, like, driving along, and all of a sudden the bus, like, stops and, like, pulls to the side, and we're like, what's going on? And the bus driver's like, I can't let off the brakes or we're going to die or something like that, which we weren't even on that I'm much of a to. hill. And so we waited, and then, like, the the principal, bus like, driver just showed up. In? <laughs> <laughs> can't get up or we're going to die. <laughs> Circle gets a square. <laughs> we just all, like... We waited for, like, the prince. I don't know why the principal of the school showed up, but he just did. <laughs> and then he just, like, puts on the emergency brake. In the, in the bus. Yes. <laughs> Quick, press the principal button. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, that's who came to our rescue, like, 20 minutes later. Maybe he just lived, like, in the neighborhood next to where we I would have thought a mechanic, but apparently the principal <laughs> chased the bus down. He just puts on the emergency brake. We all get off, and the drive shaft is just, like, laying on the ground under the bus. Like, it just got completely disconnected. Don't worry, guys. Matt Chrome is here. No one more qualified to fix a we bus. We Matt Chrome when you need him. He's just turning in poor school <laughs> yeah, bus drivers. Like yeah. Brian Ray there. Whatever the fuck his name is. Brian David Overcash. Brian David Overcash. Hi, I'm Brian David Matt Overcash. Chrome How you doing? Mr. Bill's nemesis. <laughs> Brian David Overcash, the third. <laughs>
That's what it says on my social security card. Although with Mr. Bill driving the bus, he is out of clay, so he can just reach all the way <laughs> back and put the joint up. Gum- Gumby could do that because Gumby had very ambiguous powers. Like that. And then you could put him in a I kiln and smoke sure the what fucking pot out of Gumby's powers are. <laughs> Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Atlanta, Georgia. A woman who wore a Waffle House uniform and posed as a manager while stealing cash later returned to the eatery to give the money back. Atlanta police said Thursday night. But when she did, the 35-year-old was arrested, according to Officer Kim Jones. Katie Marie McCrary of Decatur was charged with misdemeanor theft after... Is her name and place of residence a poem? <laughs> McCrary allegedly walked into the Waffle House at 219 Memorial Drive and began acting as Oh, yeah. I've eaten at that Waffle House. You know that one? Yep. She began acting as an area manager. She conducted an inspection of the restroom area, then continued her routine as a real area manager would. Uh, The Atlanta Journal-Constitution reports that she also returned the cash register key and took about $100. Later Wednesday morning, she returned to the same Waffle House, said she wanted to return the money. This time, she was arrested. See, that was stupid, because that was a smart scam. Yeah, she dressed up like a Waffle House manager, walked into the Waffle House, did all the things a manager does? Walked out with a, only a hundred bucks, which seems yeah. They would have just let it go. Right I think that like with just a hundred bucks. I think it's the yeah. one I, I oh, think you know, I, let me just say this. Estates. I like this about dressing with Waffle House. You know, they have all the the Halloween shit with all the girls and these skanky things. If they make a sexy Waffle House waitress costume, I, I would really like to see that. As a matter of fact, if anybody out there is listening. On Halloween, you come to see me. Six you wear the, from now. the yeah, the sex six months from now. You know, it gives you You're time. A little behind. You all get together your sexy Waffle House girl costumes, and you meet Mr. Good Night on Halloween, <laughs> and we will have a wonderful time. I'll save up money just for that night. That was a smart thing. Though, why did she go? She had an attack of conscience. She's doing hard time in some shit jail for a hundred dollars. Yeah. What the fuck is this country called? I mean, to? I think just you should get a hundred dollars just for ingenuity. You I, know? I agree. Uh, that's a smart thing. But yeah, that's the least you can do. Although, would an area manager take money from the till or just as that's, yeah, especially not from shit. the till? Right. Well, like, that's... also I need a hundred bucks for gas. Oh yeah, I get back this home. Waffle, waffle House don't pay that good. Yeah. I'll, I'll, it's a tax write. That's surprising because it's, it's actually just simpler you know, this way than going through corporate. Decent part of town. You know that Waffle House. Yeah, it's a it's in a that's relatively why the scam works yeah so that's well, why yeah. it worked. It was in a relatively decent Waffle House. It's not a disastrous Waffle House. Yeah, enterprise, folks. Boldness and enterprise is the key to successful crime. Walk in like you own the place in the middle of the day, like you're not doing nothing wrong. Oh, she came in at six a.m. That's, yeah. yeah, that's how you get away. Yeah, that's how you get away with shit. Inspection in the morning. Be bold. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. She came in at six a.m. So that's that's exactly when you'd expect a manager yeah. to walk in. Yeah, kind of before ever. But before. how would you? There has to be insane turnover at that Waffle House if you don't know what the manager looks like. Yeah. Well, I yeah. guess if it's like supposed to be like a regional manager. No, it's supposed to be an area. She walked in, she was dressed as an area manager. But like is she there apparently an area manager yeah. outfit. Like, yeah, I was thinking like, that. Like, it's a different did she outfit. Wear, did she wear, it's like, like an away outfit. outfit. Like, yeah. Is there like stars on it's it? It's like, like gray like, yeah. instead of white in places like it's an away just like, team outfit. Like a doo doo brown like military <laughs> outfit with <laughs> she has have, like, like epaulets. Chevrons on the side. I'm the area manager. She's got the what are the little bars on like the chests with like that's got little flags of like different waffle houses. If I, pass a, if I pass the promotion exam, I'm up this to regional manager. This one's for manager. saving someone in the line of Waffle House duty. <laughs> <laughs> this is the smothered this coven is capped. Yeah. This one's one for losing a finger in a mixer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> George, where can people find you on the internet, sir? Uh, at George Coffee on Twitter. Also, just GeorgeCoffee.com. And that's C O F F E Y. That's George Coffee in general. Yeah. C O F F E Y Coffee. Like Coffee. That weird one that Pat knew. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter at The Goods Pod. And if there's any girls want to wear the sexy Waffle House costume, go out, Mr. Goodnight, on the Halloween. I'm waiting for you, honey. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time.
The Goose from the Woods is mixed and edited by me, Rivers Langley, and distributed by Westcast Network. Our theme song is composed by DJ Smiles. You can find him online at djsmiles.net. 